Hello, this is Pastor David. Welcome to the Community Church Podcast. We believe that God moves powerfully anytime his word is shared. So even now in this moment, we're praying that this message will find its way into your heart, your soul, and your mind. That you'd be receptive not only to what God has said through his scriptures, but also to what God is saying here and now through his spirit. So welcome once again. Thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you on a Sunday. But if you're unable to make it and you still want to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting community-church.com forward slash give. Well, good morning, Community Church. So good to be with you guys again this morning. Uh, My name is Carl. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, last week we started a series called Ghost Stories. And uh, what, we're, what we're doing and what we've been trying to do uh, is we're trying to unpack this, this uh, theology of the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? And uh, w- like we said last week, um, it, across uh, uh, denominational lines, um, we talk about the Father. When we talk about God the Father. There, there's this clear understanding of who the Father is and what the Father does. And, and then we talk about Jesus. There's, there's also this clarity in terms of like, okay, with Jesus, the cross the tomb, like we understand who Jesus is and the manger and all of that stuff. But then when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there's almost this like mystery, right? There's, there's this mystery and there's this confusion about who the Spirit is and what the Spirit does. And, and what we're doing in this series is we're trying to unpack who is the Holy Ghost, Right? And, and throughout the Old Testament, he, he flickers in and out of the Old Testament like a ghost. And um, sort of like when you're, you know, you're sitting around when you were younger, you're sitting around the campfire and, and somebody was telling a ghost story or this urban legend, right? You know what I'm talking about? No? Right? The hook on the mirror, right? The, like that. You know what story I'm talking about, right? And so there's this, there's this like a little bit of this urban legend that comes with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and so we're trying to unpack who the Holy Spirit is. And we started last week by talking about, um, you know, when, when uh, in Genesis chapter 1, when the Holy Spirit shows up in verse 2, right? The Ruach, right? And we talked about how you need to say that with your hand over your mouth so you don't spit on people, right? Um, a, a gal was telling me uh, that the, the lady that cuts her hair, um, she went in this week to get her hair cut, and they, they both come to church here. And as soon as she walked into the door, she was like, Ruach, right? And like, uh, so don't spit on people, right? But Ruach is, is the, the mighty breath of God, the mighty wind, the, the blast of breath, the power of God. And we talked last week about how every time the Holy Spirit shows up in Scripture, there's what? There's power. There's power. And, uh, and we talked about how there's a, there's a purpose to that power, and, and the, per, the first and foremost uh, purpose of the Holy Spirit, the purpose of the power, is, is that the power points to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always pointing to Jesus. In John chapter 15 and John chapter 16, Jesus says, I'm going to send you a, a helper, and that helper is going to glorify me. That helper is going to talk about me. And so every time we see the Spirit showing up, especially in the New Testament, the Spirit is always pointing to Jesus, not to himself. And so we need to remember that, that the, that the power has a purpose and it's to point to Jesus. And we said last week, just briefly, that the, the second purpose to the Holy Spirit is to empower God's people. And, and so that's what we're going to talk about more in depth today. So if you need a Bible, just raise your hand. And uh, if you have a Bible, turn to Acts chapter 1. Um, we're going to get there in a second. But, but like anything, when we're studying uh, a specific thing in Scripture, like the Holy Spirit or love or grace or mercy, when we're studying something like that, we, we kind of got to look at a bunch of different passages because those things show up all throughout Scripture, okay? We call them timeless truths, all right? And, and so we want to look at a bunch of different passages, but you can turn to Acts chapter 1. I'll get there in a second. But, but I want to give us some backstory, okay? So before Acts chapter 1 happens, some other things have happened. And, and so Jesus comes on the scene uh, in, in, uh, in the Gospels, and he comes to the, to the Jordan River, and who's in the Jordan baptizing people? John the Baptist, right? Boom, perfect. John the Baptist is baptizing people and he's saying, repent, that, 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 the, 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 that Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming. And so he's baptizing, baptizing them in a baptism of repentance. Jesus shows up, walks into the water and he says, it's my turn. And John's like, uh, I, can I, am I allowed, can I do this, right? 
And John's kind of, so then John baptizes Jesus. Jesus comes out of the water. What happens? Y'all men in church, right? What happens? This dove, right? The dove you saw, the, right? Not that dove, but a dove, right? So this dove comes down and, and lands on Jesus. And the father, you hear the father speaking from heaven saying, this is my son, right? Proud. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit, the dove, the Holy Spirit falls on Jesus. And Jesus now has power to do ministry. And so from here on out, Jesus is healing and he's casting out demons and he's doing miracles and he's teaching with authority. And, he, and he's doing all these things through the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? And, and so for three years, he, he starts picking people, right? We said last week that he didn't pick the varsity. He picked the, J, he picked the B team. And he, and he started picking out all these guys, and Peter, you come with me, and, 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 and uh, Matthew, you come with me. And, and he starts picking all these disciples, right? And for three years, these disciples are with Jesus. They're, they're alongside of Jesus, and they're seeing Jesus empowered by the Spirit, right? So the whole three years, they see Jesus doing miracles because of the power of the Spirit, teaching because of the power of the Spirit, and, and he's doing all of these things. So they're watching this happen. Jesus is teaching them how to make disciples. He's teaching them how to build God's kingdom. He's teaching them how to live on mission. In John chapter 16, John chapter 16, it says this in verse 4. You can follow it on the screen. It says, I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. So, so Jesus, at, at the beginning of this three years, right, he gets the Holy Spirit, he calls these people to follow him, and he, and he says, listen, I didn't tell you this at the beginning because I knew you would freak. Like, you would lose your mind if I told you this. And, and so he says, I didn't tell you this at, at first, but now, verse 5, but now I'm going to him who sent me. And none of you asks, where are you going? So, so remember, this is, here's how this all unfolds, right? Jesus died on a cross. He was buried in a tomb. He came back to life. And now he's looking at them and he's saying, listen, I got to go again. And I didn't tell you at first because I knew you would lose your mind and you would freak out. And, but I need you to know that I need to leave. Look what he says, verse 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled you. They're freaking out. Like, I, knew, I knew this was going to happen. Verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your what? What does it say? Advantage. It is to your advantage that I go away. He's, he looks at his disciples and he says, it's better for you that I leave. Can you imagine? They just spent three years watching Jesus do the impossible. Watching Jesus live a life of power and authority. And Jesus is saying, if, if I don't go, it won't be good for you. It will be better for you if I leave. Look what he says. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now here's, here's what Jesus is saying to his disciples at this very moment. He says that he has to leave or the Holy Ghost won't show up. And, and he's basically saying, let me ask you a question. Because this is the question that was running through their mind as Jesus was finishing this sentence. Here's the question I want you to think about. Would you rather have Jesus beside you or the Holy Spirit inside of you? Uh, I mean, you don't want to offend Jesus, right? Be like, oh, Jesus, sorry, but... I mean, but, but think about it. The, the, the disciples... Now, they had an advantage that we don't have. They lived with Jesus for three years. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him, do, they saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw him take a couple of loaves and a couple of fish and do an incredible miracle. So they saw him for three years do those things. And now he says, listen, it's better if the Holy Spirit comes. Would you rather have Jesus beside you or the Holy Spirit inside of you. And what Jesus is saying to his disciples and to us is this. It's way better to have the Holy Spirit inside of you than to have Jesus beside you. Jesus said in John chapter 14 that, that, that we, that disciples, that followers of Jesus would do greater things than him. Now, now not greater in terms of power, but greater in terms of extent. Did you know that Jesus never preached outside of Palestine? 
And yet the disciples took the gospel to the ends of the earth, right? Because why? Because they had what? Because they had the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is saying, you're going to do greater things. You're going to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. The reason we're sitting here today talking about Jesus is because the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they preached the life-changing message of Jesus to anyone that could hear him. Jesus, Jesus left his followers so that they could receive the same fuel that he had. The Holy Spirit is the fuel for the kingdom of God to advance. For the kingdom of God to move forward, we need the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, listen, the Holy Spirit is is more critical to mission than I am because it's the power. Jesus couldn't do mission on his own. He came as the God-man. And until that Holy Spirit came down on him and filled him with power, he couldn't do mission. And so that's what he was teaching his disciples for three years, saying, listen, watch me, watch me, watch me. Acts chapter one, you're already there, right? Acts chapter one. Jesus' last command to his disciples. Don't you think that Jesus' last command should be our first priority, right? Jesus' last command, Acts chapter one, here's what it says. Verse six, starting in verse six. So when they, who's they? Who's they? The disciples, right? Okay. So when they had come together, they asked him. Now, again, is this before the, the cross or is this after the cross? This is after the cross, okay? So, so Jesus died, he was buried, he was raised to, to, to life, and he spent time with the disciples. And so they're hanging out with Jesus like they've been doing for the last 40 days. They're hanging out, they're hanging out with Jesus, and, and it says, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will what? What's it say? Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Isn't that crazy? They spent three years with Jesus. They saw him. They heard him. They experienced all of that stuff. They saw him come back to life. They, they heard all of these things, and they still don't get it. Because they're asking Jesus, Jesus, when are you gonna, when are you gonna set up your palace here on earth? Jesus, when are, you gonna, when are you gonna become the rightful king here on earth? And Jesus is like, you, you don't get it. That's not, now, you know what's really interesting about this verse? What stands out to me in verse six is this. They look at Jesus and they say, Jesus, when will, Jesus, when will, Jesus, when will, when will you, Jesus, when will you finish the job that you started? Jesus, when will you do the work that you said you were going to come and do? Jesus, when will you, Jesus, when will you? You see, the disciples had spent three years watching Jesus, and you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to keep watching. I mean, they, they joined him at times, and they did some work, and he would send them out, and they'd come back, and they'd be like, well, that totally failed. We have no idea what we're doing. And Jesus says, well, you can't, this actually only works if you pray. <laughs> but they, they loved watching. You know what? I, I heard someone once describe the church a lot like the Super Bowl right? Thousands and thousands of fans watching 11 exhausted players do all the work. <laughs> it's the church, isn't it? The disciples were like, Jesus, when are, Jesus, when are you going to, when are you going to finish your job? They, they wanted to just sit back and watch and spectate. They didn't want to be involved in the work. And Jesus looks at them and says, ah, show's over, guys. Show's over. Time to get to work. You see, God did not give us his spirit to go on vacation. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't go on vacation. Vacation is not, I like vacation, okay? And there's a whole theology of rest throughout Scripture that's really important for us to understand. But I want you, look up here, I want you to hear this. Any time that the spirit is poured out in Scripture, there's work. The, 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 there is not one time in Scripture where, where the Holy Spirit is poured out on Peter and he goes to the beach and sips pina coladas, 
right? Any, listen, anytime the Spirit is poured out, there is work that's being done. In Exodus chapter 35, you can read this later. In Exodus chapter 35, uh, God pours out his spirit on a guy named Be- uh, Bezalel. I don't know. You can look it up, okay? Pours out his spirit on a guy, and, he, and he's, he has these skills, these supernatural skills to build the temple. Because listen, when God pours out his spirit, work needs to get done. Did you know that, um, do you remember Saul in the Old Testament, King Saul, right? Right? And, and God had, you know, the, the people were like, we want a king, we want a king. And God's like, well, I'm your king. And they're like, yeah, but we want a real king. And God's like, fine, you have a king. And they, he, they, they pick Saul, and Saul becomes king. And, and, and it says that God sent an evil spirit. That's a whole other sermon. God sent an evil spirit into Saul. And the only way for that spirit to, to be calmed in him was what? Does anybody know? Music. And who played the music that calmed Saul? David did. They called out this little boy, a little shepherd, little musician, little, little worship leader, right? And he comes in and he plays the, the harp and it's and it suit. Listen, because why? Because he was filled with the Spirit. And so God's Spirit is on David and, he, and he's playing music to suit. Listen, when the Holy Spirit shows up, work gets done. When God pours out judgment on the people of Israel or on their, on their enemy nations, It's because God's spirit is poured out on those people. Samson, Gideon, right? Ehud, all of these, listen, all of these, uh, all of these people that had God's spirit poured out on them did work for God. Preaching throughout the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit. God shows up. When God pours out his spirit, work gets done done. Paul says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 29, he says, for this I toil. Toil is what? It's work. He says, for this I toil, struggling with all of his energy that he powerfully works within me. The Holy Spirit's at work. There's work. We don't work in our own strength. We cannot work in our own strength. And we will never have power from God unless we believe we have none of our own. Did you hear that? We will never have power from God unless we believe that we have absolutely no power on our own. Not by might, nor by spirit, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he says, no, 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 show's over. It's time to to get your hands dirty. It's time to get to work. Look at, jump to verse eight. He says, but you will receive what? You will receive power. The word is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. Explosive power. So now think about this for a second, right? And, And if you... If you were sitting there and Jesus said, you're going to receive explosive power. I mean, here's the disciples saying, listen, we're going to watch you. You just do your thing, Jesus. We'll, we'll applaud you. If you need us to pick up the, you know, the, the scraps from, the, from the, the, the buffet that you just, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, hey, we'll just let you. And he, and he looks at them and he says, you're going to receive explosive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Explosive power. Can you imagine what they're thinking? The Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the mighty breath of God, the violent wind of God, supernatural power, necessary power, sufficient power, the same spirit that they saw at work in Jesus for three years, the same spirit that gave Jesus Jesus boldness and authority to teach, the same spirit that turned water into wine, the same spirit that fed 5,000 people with a couple of loaves and a few fish, the same spirit that raised Lazarus from the dead. And and Jesus just looks at them and says, I'm gonna give you that spirit. I'm gonna give you that explosive power. Can you imagine? Now, now instead of them being like, you know, like, oh, Jesus, you just do it, they're kind of like, whoa, wait a minute, what? Like, we could do really cool tricks? Like, like, like they're kind of like, man, we're going to have that power. We're going to have that kind of power, that kind of access. But here's the thing. 
The purpose of this power isn't so that you can do really cool tricks, right? This purpose of this power isn't so that you get glory and, you, and people applaud you. The purpose of this power is that it would point to Jesus and that it would empower God's people for what? Look what it says. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will do what? What do you do? You will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The word witness is the word martis. Martis. It means to testify. It, it means to, 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 to tell people about what you've seen and what you've heard. We understand that, right? That, that we, oh, well, they were an eyewitness. They were there. They saw it. They heard it. They knew about it. And so then they testify about, their, about what they saw and what they heard. But the word martis is actually where we get the word martyr. And it actually means to testify to the point of death. To not be ashamed. To not be ashamed to testify or to witness about what we've seen and heard. You see, what happens in what happens with followers of Jesus at times, apart from the Holy Spirit, is exactly what happened to Peter. Remember we talked about him last week? When Peter was at the trial and the little girl was looking at him and she was, what'd she say? Weren't you, weren't you one of Jesus? You're one of Jesus' disciples. And he's like, no, 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 no. See, he didn't want to testify. He didn't want to be a witness. You want to know why? Because he didn't have what? He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. And as soon as he gets the Holy Spirit, he is unashamed, boldly, unapologetically proclaiming what he's seen and heard. So it begs the question, do we have the Spirit? Because <laughs> if you have the Spirit, you testify. If you have the Spirit, you are a witness. That's what Acts 1.8 says. You will receive the Holy Spirit and you will what? You might be a witness. Is that what it says? No, it says you will be my witnesses. The power of God's Spirit. Write this down. Take a picture of it. Let's do something with this, okay? The power of God's Spirit gives power to our witness. You cannot witness, you cannot testify without having the Holy Spirit. The power of God's Spirit gives power to our witness. The power that drives us comes from the Spirit inside of us. God has left us in this world to witness to the world, okay? So I want you to think about this for a second. There are two things on this earth that are eternal. They will last forever. What are they? Tax, not taxes. <laughs> they, they, they be gone, praise Jesus, right? Listen, the, the two things that will last forever are this thing right here, God's word, will not, this, this will not cease to exist. God's word and people. The only two things that will last for eternity. And, and what are we spending our life on here? What are we spending our time in? What are we spending our energy on? What are we spending our money on? Because these, only these two things, people and God's word, will last for eternity. And so, so what God says is he says, listen, I'm going to leave. Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to send you a helper, okay? And, and I'm going to leave you here so that you can be a witness here. Before Jesus sent the church into the world, he sent the Spirit into the church. So that we could what? So that we could represent. Do you guys know represent? It's kind, of, it's kind of a, I mean, you know the word represent, but, but the urban dictionary, you know what I'm talking about? You gotta represent, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Was that too? I try to work with youth, and so it's really, <laughs> try to bridge the gap between teenagers and, uh, and you all. Um, but, but like, so think about this, right? So Badger game yesterday. 
Didn't go so well, okay? Badger game yesterday. These, the stadium's filled with what? People in what color shirts? Red. Tons of red, right? Because why? Because they want to, they want to represent. They want to represent their team, right? And, and so, listen, there's a Packer game. What are people going to wear? Silver and blue. Not silver and blue, <laughs> right? I'm sorry. There's so much shame for us Lions fans. It's just ridiculous. But right, you wear green, right? Green and gold. Because why? Because you want to you wanna represent. You want to represent. Listen, this is what Jesus is saying in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He's saying, I will give you the Spirit and you will represent. You will represent. In John chapter 20, I'm going to invite the worship team up. In John chapter 20, uh, Jesus says this. Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. As the Father sent me, as the Father filled me with his spirit, so I'm sending you, I'm filling you with his spirit. So that you can represent. Now listen, here's just a little play on words, right? Represent. You see, God wants you to represent. He wants you to be a witness for him. But, but you don't do that by sitting at home, sitting on your hands. Right? We need to represent. So, so we're going to talk in just a moment about how we represent. How we can be a witness for Christ. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question. Where do we represent? Where do we represent Jesus? Jesus. Everywhere. Okay, you guys just jump to the end of the whole, right? So everywhere, right? And, and so, like, I thought you guys were going to be like, well, my, my home and my school and my workplace and my neighborhood and my, and those things are all true. But the reality is, is everywhere you go, you are, you are representing Jesus. Everywhere you go, people are watching you. Everywhere you go, you are a witness. And sometimes we're a good witness and sometimes we're a bad witness. Now the question, the next question we need to ask is this, how? How can I represent Jesus? How can I represent Team Jesus? How can I be a witness everywhere? Here's how you can do it. Speak. Some of you need to open your mouth. Some of you need to talk about Jesus. Don't be like Peter before he received the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Hey, don't, don't, weren't you at church? No, I don't even know what you mean. We cannot be ashamed. We need to speak. The next thing we need to do is we need to act like Jesus. Listen to me. Don't, don't talk about Jesus and not act like Jesus. That's not representing that's not being a witness. Be bold. You know what's interesting about when the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples throughout the book of Acts? Over and over and over again, it says that their boldness, that they were bold. That in the face of fear, in the face of intimidation, in the face of the religious leaders saying, stop, they said, we, we can't help but talk about Jesus. Use your talents. Use your talents. Some of you have like incredible natural abilities and God wants to infuse those natural abilities like in Exodus 35. He wants to infuse those natural abilities with the power of his spirit so that something that seems really menial and, and something really simple becomes something supernatural. build something. We have, we, we have, uh, we're starting this ministry called 92 Go, okay? In the cafe, there's a sign up for it, but, but there's this, this idea, this dream that we have of, of creating a ministry that serves our area code, that, that we would see needs in our neighborhood. Not, listen, not just needs in our church, but needs in our neighborhood, and, and somebody's spouse passes away and now we've got a single mom with three kids and, and her, her house is falling apart and how can we go and how can we serve them and how can we love them? Build something. 
pray for someone. You know how you can be a witness? You know how you can represent Jesus? Pray with someone. The Spirit empowers us to be people of prayer. Feed someone. It's so simple. We got, we got people in our, in our city. We have people in our area who, who are starving, that are homeless. And you want to represent Jesus? You know who Jesus hung out with? He hung out with those people. He hung out with the sick. He hung out with the homeless. He hung out. Listen, that's what it means to represent Jesus. Comfort someone. You know, Jesus says, I will send you the helper and he will comfort you. So if you have the comforter in you, then what should we do with people who are hurting and struggling? Bring them comfort. Listen, there are so many ways that you can represent Jesus. But I, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this this morning. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot be a witness apart from the power of the Spirit of God in you. And so here's what we're going to ask. What we're going to ask as we close this morning is we're going to ask that, that God's Spirit would fill us. And, and we were, we're going to welcome God's Spirit in so that we can respond and we can be witnesses and we can represent Jesus in our world. So let's stand and declare this to Jesus.